Yeah, uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, a warm welcome on behalf of 4i in Graham and Oracle uh, for, for taking time to attend this session. So I'm sure the next uh, 45 minutes will be of uh, use to you. Yeah, thank you. Myself, Prem Kumar, I handle uh, marketing at 4i Apps. Uh, we are a 13 year old company uh, operating with Middle East headquarters in Dubai. Yes. So on today's agenda, yes, we will uh, give you a short intro about who we are uh, and what we do, and then I will hand it over to the uh, Islam and Sina to take you through the uh, today's topic of how Oracle database and database options are driving great value for our customers. And uh, yes, so uh, uh, we are an Oracle partner for the last 13 years. So we are enrolled in all the four tracks with Oracle, including the on-premise, cloud, self-service, build. So we have over 450 plus consultants across the globe uh, and our offshore delivery center is in India and our Middle East headquarters in Dubai. So any point in time, we service at least Oracle, 100 plus Oracle uh, customers. So as I said, we have been uh, in UAE for the past 13 years. So, and we are uh, expanding across the globe. So Middle East, we have office in UAE, Oman and uh, Qatar, and we also operate in Kuwait and Bahrain through partners. We have office in Asia Pacific, which includes our India ODC headquarters, Singapore and Malaysia. And North America, we have office in Canada and US and UK, Europe, uh, we have office in London and Poland. So we are an ISO 9001 certified organization. We are also undergoing ISO 27001 and uh, BCM as business continuity standards and with this certification is expected uh, in the first quarter of this calendar year. So these are some of our accolades. Uh, so we have been nominated as a fastest going uh, technology partner by Deloitte for two times and uh, we have been awarded by Oracle for the uh, volume licenses that we sell through Oracle. Uh, we have been awarded as a volume partner of the year for the 2018-19 year. And Red Daring also recognized as 100 fastest growing company in the region. So, <clears throat> so Oracle has uh, has introduced new way of tracking the partners. So it is a modern partner network. Earlier you would, uh, would be familiar with gold, silver, and platinum partnership. Uh, now they all uh, converged into one single modern partner network. And uh, the number of expertise the company has. Uh, gained that explains the superiority of the company or their uh, expertise over the skill set that they are offering. And uh, and we have more than 62 expertise in Oracle, both on-premise, cloud, uh, EBS, and everything together. So these are some of the uh, database customers in the region. Uh, so you might be familiar with some of them, Irene, Grand Stores, Gulf Center, NS, Dama. So we're doing a lot of Oracle database related work for them. So with this, I hand over to Mr. Islam for uh, taking you to the next uh, set of sessions. So any question answers will be, we can ask in the chat box, chat box or we can keep it at the end. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, hello everyone, uh, nice to meet you today uh, for the first time. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Islam Mohammed Smail, uh, Senior Solution Engineer uh, in, uh, in Oracle supporting uh, database and database management tools in uh, Lower Gulf. Uh, me and my colleague Sina today we will cover uh, two uh, topics or three topics. Uh, we will cover the Oracle Converged Database first. And my colleague Sina will cover uh, two topics uh, for the Oracle database option and maximum availability and maximum security architecture as well. So uh, let me start for the, our first topic for today, with, uh, which is Oracle uh, Converged uh, Database. Our agenda for today, we will talk about the modern application requirement nowadays. Uh, what is the difference and what is the advantage and disadvantage between the single purpose and converged database? How can Oracle Converged Database uh, supporting different data types and workloads? And uh, the last point, we will talk about how converge the data will improve the value and how can we make use more from the value if we converge this data in one location. So let me start first with the uh, current modern application requirement. 
most of the application requirements nowadays required multiple workloads to work together to achieve the goal of our application. Uh, it's required to run a transactional workload with analytics and reporting workload might be also required a machine learning uh, model and algorithm to be run on top of my application to achieve the full picture or a full requirement from my application. Besides a multiple workload, we also, the new application is required to run multiple data types. Multiple data types, we are talking about here, uh, structured data or semi-structured or unstructured data, like uh, document data, JSON, special and uh, blockchain data, and some feature to support a multiple workload as well in the same uh, setup on the same uh, interface or application. For this requirement, for the modern application requirement, we have currently in the market, we have two data strategies. The first strategy is a single purpose, which is implementing each requirement or each separate environment, each separate requirement in different uh, database. For each data type, I will create a new database. For each data model, I will create a new database. For each workload, I will build my own database. And all of these databases, single uh, databases, they can integrate together to achieve my uh, digital application or for my full uh, application requirement. The other data strategy here is a converged database to host multiple workloads, to host multiple data types in one location and make them also integrated with them with each other within the same environment, with the same uh, data model to be able to achieve my goal. So let me first explain the single uh, purpose database. Single purpose database, as we said, it's something we built for each service. Each new requirement based on the modern application requirement, it will lead our developer to distribute the application into a small services and a small engine. Each, each engine supporting a different uh, workload or supporting a different data type or supporting a required services might be, I will build a service for document using JSON uh, based on separate database and I will create a new database for the analytics and reporting. I will create a new database or a new engine for the machine learning because each one of them is supporting one feature, supporting one data model, and all of them together can work together to achieve my main goal from this application or from the, my digital application, for example. But we have many issues in this approach, uh, in the single purpose uh, strategy or approach. We have uh, issues related to using different uh, development tool for each uh, data type, for each engine. Different skills also is required for each one of them. Data consistency, it will, it will be different between each engine. The security level will be different between all of them and the scalability as well. The most important pain point here is the integration. And uh, as you can see here in this statement, Gartner said that the integration time will cost and uh, uh, cost and time will consume around 50% of my whole project to build my digital uh, platform. And I think this number uh, should be more than this, actually, for the integration, as we are talking about integrating be between different data models, different structure, and we need to replicate the data, for example, between them, need, the da need to read the data from different applications to achieve our goal. And this will require a huge time, actually, and cost to be able to achieve this, and also replicating the data in many databases to achieve this goal. This is just an example from uh, uh, from AWS database uh, website. Uh, we are not talking about AWS here. I just highlight because this is a clear clarification for the idea of the single purpose uh, approach or strategy. As you can see here, for different uh, services, database services, we have for database type, for the wow. relational uh, purposes or the in-memory or document might be special or graph or blockchain. Okay, okay. Uh, this just we just explain it to how the single purpose database is working. We are defining a different service or the different database for each requirement. Might be for the document we need to host the data in using JSON on might be Mongo database or any other document database. We are required to build a new machine or a new database for the machine learning. We might require a new building, a new service for the uh, analytics and reporting. This kind of single purpose database will lead to many pain points like 
required a development tools, management scalability, uh, might be uh, required a DBA for each uh, engine or each database to identify also the same level of security across all my uh, data models. It will be also a headache. As we said, the integration is the most pain point here because as Bear Gartner that the integration between data hosted in different or separate single purpose database with different data model and different algorithms might require between uh, around 50%. And I think this number should be more than this because we are talking about integration between different language, different data, data model and different strategies as well. So this is uh, the pain points that will be generated from using a single purpose database. We just give you an example here from the AWS database website. We are not talking about AWS here. We are just using this a clear example about the single purpose database. As you can see here, we have different database types, relational key values, in memory, a document and white columns. And for each data type, for each requirement, we have a different database service. And this not only for AWS, it will be find it also for different vendor. Might be for the relational, you will use Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, for the in-memory, we might use SAP HANA document. We can use Mobi. For the white columns, we can use Cassandra. So for each uh, separate requirement or each new data type, we are required to build a new data model and a new service. This can be solved in, in Oracle using Oracle Converged Database. We are using one location or one converged database that can be host and implement within one engine, within the same language, all different kind of data types and different type of workload, as we will explain later in our presentation. So I just need to give you an example here. For example, uh, I, um, I got a new project, this new project to build a, a document store to host my our document data. So I will build my document database to host this data because the only request is building a document uh, store for my data. So I will build my document data on based on JSON or based on anything else. So to host my document data. After some time and after finishing my, my project, my uh, product manager or my uh, boss asked me, we need to add a new phase for uh, running analytics on top of this one. So analytics is required uh, an ETL processing and might require a huge resources and might be a specific requirement for the memory and CPU. So I will build a new environment. I will build a new database for the data warehouse and replicate the data using ETL jobs from my document store or document database to the new data warehouse. After some time, my boss told me that I need to build a new uh, my machine learning platform on top of it. So because of this, I will also build a new machine learning platform to run my machine learning algorithm on top of my ETL or on top of my data warehouse environment. At the end, I will find myself with a single purpose database building a small application, building a small databases to achieve uh, separately each uh, requirement specifically. And this will, as we explain, also the integration between this environment or integration between different databases with different language, it will become a very complex and required a lot of customization and consuming time, as we said. The solution is using Oracle Converged Database. This is the second strategy is using the Converged Database because Oracle Converged Database simply it's working to solve all of this. How can we solve this? We are hosting one platform one language, same language for all of them, supporting many data types, might be relational, non-structured or semi-structured, might be for document like JSON using special and the graph, might be we are using also blockchain to support the ledger and the, uh, fraud detection uh, use cases. Not only the, uh, the different data types, but also multiple workloads. The feature inside Oracle, Oracle Converged Database can be able to achieve running a trans transactional uh, workload beside an analytics or reporting based on our feature like in memory, as we will explain. And also it's provided to the customer a huge library of machine learning algorithms that can support their requirement and achieve the idea of converged database. Let me take you through each feature uh, quickly. The first one is known for all of us, the relational data, which is a, a, a RDBMS. This is the one which was Oracle leading in the market since more than 30 years. 
to achieve the data consistency, security and availability and performance for the relational data, and hosting uh, Oracle and non-Oracle application, ERB and CRM, and also might be SAP also. And around 70% of 80% of SAP application is hosted on Oracle because of this uh, strongest point, the relational data. Oracle based on this uh, area start also to leverage this capabilities to help the customer to host also the, let's say semi-structured or unstructured data like JSON document store. Oracle start to implement uh, a large document uh, store, it might be a JSON document, might be XML, might be even videos and uh, images using our uh, uh, data type called large objects, the loop, the loop uh, object and C loop and B loop. But currently uh, in the new releases, as you can see in the, uh, in the, in the button here, Oracle introduced a new data type for the JSON to host your JSON data in the same JSON format in my database. As you can see, we just need to create the table and define a column with the JSON, and the data will be hosted as uh, a JSON format in my database. And not only this, not only for hosting the data or inserting the data, but also Oracle introduced a features or a capabilities to help the user to interact with this data select a pattern from my whole document, select a pattern from my PDF using a built-in package that supports the JSON requirement or document store requirement, like the JSON text uh, contain, for example. As you can see here in, the ex in this example, we are creating a kind of search index on my JSON data or JSON column, and using our normal SQL language, no need for any extra skills. Using SQL language, we are able to select from or search for a pattern might be a word or uh, a statement inside my document store, document, uh, document uh, data using the JSON uh, text uh, contains. And we have many, many packages and procedure inside uh, Oracle Converged Database that helping the user to retrieve their uh, JSON data and interact with, with this data. The second feature is uh, in memory. Uh, this area uh, might Colleagues will cover it in details, but I just give you an information about that the in-memory is a feature helping the user to running multiple workloads. We are able to run transactional and analytics and reporting in the same way because simply the idea here is based on hosting the data in the memory and dramatically find again from hosting the data in the memory compared to reading the data from the uh, data files or the or raw disks. Plus, we are hosting the data in what we call column format. This also dramatically improves the performance, might be reached to 100x improvement in the statement, in the, our statement or accessing this data. And as we said, my colleague Sina will cover this part in detail uh, in uh, the uh, next slides. The second feature also in the converged database is supporting the machine learning. Uh, before we are uh, required to move our data to outside the database to uh, run uh, our uh, machine learning or deep analysis on my data. Currently, as you can see in the right side, Oracle supporting uh, many, many, uh, and a huge library of uh, machine learning algorithm inside Oracle, uh, providing a schema, a dedicated schema for data mining uh, to help the customer to run their machine learning on run their algorithm on using their own data and no need to build a new environment for machine learning. As you can see, here is also is an example for creating a model based on data mining. And we are based on this model, we are able to select or retrieve the predicted data that for the customers that they are uh, planning to uh, buy travel insurance based on the data model, as we said. So the machine learning now became available and for free inside Oracle Converged Database, you can use it instead of building a new machine learning environment. The next one is a special. Special, as you know, it's a, a tool. It was introduced in Oracle from a long time, but now also it's became for free. It's helping the customer for whatever the use cases related to the geometric object. Might be defining location, defining the route between uh, 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 position A and position B. It can be used for the public safety and defense, uh, tracking for the order for the delivery uh, company, like the, you, when you open to track the order, you will define the, the, you will find a tracking for the your delivery person from point A to point B. All this feature can be implemented using a special, and also you will find a huge library 
and the dedicated component inside Oracle Converged Database for free to support the special requirement. The new, the newest uh, feature in, in Oracle Converged Database is the blockchain. Blockchain here, it's a, a feature for uh, securing your data, chaining your data. It's a normal table, as you can see, any DBA can create it or anyone can create this database, be, uh, this table, because it's using as we our uh, natural language, which is SQL. Creating this table will allow, automatically will change the data inside it and the cryptographic hashing will happen to the data once you insert it inside this table. So what is the difference between this table and normal tables? This table, you, it will allow you to select and insert, and it can be joined with a normal table, but it will not allow you to delete or update. Why? Because the data, once it's inserted in this table, it will be automatically the cryptographic hashing will happen to it. So the rows each itself will be chained together. So you can't prog this chain to achieve the uh, uh, security for this data and to keep history about all application data and to achieve also the consistency of the data. The use cases for the blockchain, it can work for, uh, with the banking sector while it's required to keep the historical data, application historical data secure, plus it will prevent any fraud cases because as we said, data, updating data or deleting the data is not allowed within this table because it's chain data and collected together so you can know the history based on this blockchain table and achieving the security as well. Let's explain to you a small example to just make the idea of the converged data or converging the data is improving the value. All of us, as you, as you know, all of us have a smartphone. Each smartphone in your hand, we have uh, a phone, cells, we have a messaging, we have a camera, we have a photos, and we have also might be a music player inside my phone. Each one of these products before was separate product. It's became now in the smartphone as a feature. Before, before smartphone, we, we should have a camera for taking a photo. We should have a music player to play music. We should have a, a phone itself to, to do the calls. But now using the smartphone, we all these products became as a feature. Same like the converged database. We can use machine learning outside the converged database. We can use a document store outside blockchain also. But using this feature together, it's using this product together, it became a feature inside my converged database. The good thing also here is that the interaction between all this feature, uh, it can work together. I can send a, send an email, uh, send a photo from my uh, phone using my internet connection. I can use my uh, camera to kill, to take a photo and put it on my uh, using my uh, music player. They can integrate together. Same for the converged. I can make use from different component to work together using the same language. No need to have a different skills. And also I can use this different uh, feature inside my converged database to achieve a many and a huge benefit from same data without replicating the data in different location, uh, but I am hosting the data in one location to read from it. This is just an example to give you an idea about the uh, converged database. Uh, this is the important link that you should, if you need to know more about the converged database, for sure we will share with you the presentation once we finish, finish today. Uh, uh, now I will ask my uh, colleague uh, Sina to, uh, to move to the next topic, which will be cover the database option and uh, database maximum availability architecture and maximum security architecture. But if you have any question, please uh, feel free to uh, uh, host it here in the chat and I will try to answer it. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Islam. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me share my presentation. Uh, thank you all for joining. And uh, my name is Sina Ranjit. I'm working as a senior solution architect in Oracle uh, in database and database related technologies. Uh, in, uh, in today's session, I will be covering the database options and its features, uh, including the important framework that we have as maximum availability architecture and also the maximum security architecture. Uh, okay, due to time constraint, I will be taking, um, you know, I'll be going through a bit faster, uh, but I'll be trying to cover as much as possible. Uh, 
with the uh, options and all. I have picked up a uh, few uh, important uh, database options and features that I will be detailing in the coming slides. Then we will move on to the maximum availability architecture and the security architecture. So without any uh, to you, I will uh, start with the database offerings. The first topic, today's topic is this one. So I'll start with the Oracle database offerings. Hope it is clear to you, uh, the screen. Okay, uh, in today's uh, session, let's start with the database offerings. So when we say database offerings in Oracle, we have different flavors of uh, uh, database offerings we have, which are database uh, standard edition, enterprise edition, enterprise edition on engineered systems and personal edition. These are the important ones. So what are, what are these? Like uh, standard edition, it is specifically designed for development work group. And enterprise edition is for the enterprise level application development. When we say enterprise level application, which requires uh, high performing, uh, easily scalable, and uh, with advanced options like advanced features of Oracle database options like uh, compression, uh, security, multi tenancy, uh, in memory features. These all are options are available. All, all these options are available with enterprise edition of Oracle database flavor. So this uh, addition is important when we have highly performing or uh, OLTP systems development and in order to host data warehouse applications and so on, such kind of applications. So enterprise edition on engineered system is same as enterprise edition, but it is specifically designed for Exadata and ODA appliances. These are engineered systems. It is same as all the options are available. Uh, like enterprise editions, but uh, you know the licensing of uh, ODA and Exadata is a bit different. So we have different licensing format for these appliances. Uh, like I mentioned, all the options are available with uh, uh, engineered system, Exadata uh, and uh, enterprise edition on engineered systems. Uh, all these capabilities of enterprise edition can be enhanced by certain uh, management packs uh, like uh, uh, diagnostic and tuning pack, lifecycle management pack, and so and so. So these are the main options. We also have database personal edition, which is uh, designed for single user development, like I already mentioned here. So this is also, can, you know, this is required for, you know, we have development of uh, uh, application which requires compatibility with enterprise edition uh, and standard edition also, but it doesn't support uh, advanced features like uh, real application cluster and none of the, you know, diagnostic packs, the managing packs are available with personal edition. So these are the main database flowers which are available on prem. Uh, so I will move on to the options available with all these, you know, there are certain set of options are not available in all these flavors, but uh, I will be taking, uh, I'll be detailing about few important options that we uh, use in, you know, enterprise applications. Uh, so let, these are the, okay, these are the database options, like we have data guard, data Oracle Data uh, Guard, which is Active Data Guard, then we have database board, partitioning, uh, real application clustering. These are the important database options we have it in Oracle Database. So let's start with the first option that I have picked up for you, which is uh, partitioning. Uh, like you know, you know your database, even if it is ideal also, the database is continuously growing. So we have huge volume of data that makes you know manageability a bit difficult which creates performance problems uh, for example you have a you know highly concurrent uh, oltp application uh, which creates a lot of uh, performance related issues because of the huge volume of data that it generates in the database which creates hot objects or hot spots in the database it's because you have a lot of data that needs to be accessed as a part of your application how it is being designed to access the data which is stored in the database. Also, uh, you have a certain set of DBA related activities. So these uh, activities that makes uh, your day to day uh, DBA life also miserable in terms when they have to manage and uh, work in a manner uh, in a, how the data is stored in a huge volume. So partitioning is an option wherein it is like you are uh, making small chunks of your data, which is stored in the database objects like tables and indexes. So the way you access the data. So for example, you have an application which always uh, uses the latest data, which is generated recently or in the last month or last couple of weeks. So you don't have to go to the uh, historical data, which is generated. So what if 
uh, if this data is stored into small chunks, you don't have to scan the entire data. You have to only scan the recent data. So these options, you know, the partition help us to uh, achieve these options, achieve these uh, requirements uh, by dividing the data into multiple chunks. So how it is benefiting is that, you know, uh, you always work on the uh, small chunks of data. So partitioning uh, in Oracle, we always recommend that, you know, you do the partitioning of the table if it is greater than 2 GB size. Also, we have uh, something like uh, information lifecycle management. What we are trying to do is that, you know, you are tiering your data according, like I mentioned, we are tiering the data according to the activity pattern of your data, you know, how the application is accessing your data, whether it is in, uh, whether it is always uh, trying to access the latest content of the data or the historical content of the data. So oh, for that one part, single, single segment uh, table, it cannot be used for that option. It has to be partitioned. That is one of the prereq for partitioning uh, requirements in the Oracle database. So how it is in summary, how partitions are benefiting. It improves the performance because uh, you are not uh, scanning the entire set of huge volume of data. You are trying to get access to the latest volume or with, within the latest partition of the data. So this improves the performance and also the availability of critical information because you are splitting into multiple groups or multiple chunks. Your data is available. For example, your data is corrupted. You, your entire data a table may not be able to retrieve, but you can do the recovery of the uh, single partition. Also in terms of cost, like I mentioned, uh, you can do the intelligent steering. Intelligent steering, when I say intelligent steering is that you can define uh, partitions uh, on a storage you keep the uh, you know highly active i mean highly active data on a tier 1 storage and less active data on a tier 2 storage so tier 1 storage is always expensive so you keep the data in that storage so in that way you are saving the cost of your uh, uh, storage so partitions help us achieve this one so this is an uh, it is a very easy implementation technique. Application, there is no change. This is purely, it can be done online also. Uh, this is, there are wide variety of partitions available. Like you have hash partitioning, range partitioning. Uh, then you can uh, do the interval partitioning. You don't have to maintain the partitions for the new, uh, you know, data pattern, which is getting created. There are interval partitions available. So this is a proven techniques there are thousands and thousands of customers which are used uh, they are using this option of the database and getting benefit from the partitioning option so this is the first option that i would like to cover i i hope this is very clear to you and uh, how we can benefit from the part, uh, you know oracle partitioning how it will benefit your applications uh, to perform better and how to save the cost also <clears throat> So I will move on to the next one, which is uh, database in memory. Uh, my uh, friend, my colleague uh, Islam had already given you an example of how it works. Uh, so database in memory <coughs> is uh, it's like a performance booster uh, for your analytical operations. Okay. Uh, for example, we have reports and dashboards, uh, you know, used for our business use cases. So these business reports and dashboards you know, you try. You are getting the data access from the uh, all TP database, right? This data is moved from one database to the data warehouse or data, you know, staging area to get it processed. So you have. Uh, what if this uh, reporting, this data movement, uh, is getting delayed? At the end, you need this data, which has to be available on the. Uh, you know, data warehouse system, data warehouse system to make it a dashboard or reports. There might be requirements that you need, uh, you know, reports from the OLTP uh, 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 database itself. So when we say OLTP, it is not supported. It's not very supportive for uh, running your analytical queries directly. So these delays in generating the reports that that is impacting your applications in a way that you know. Oh, Mm, you are slow for your uh, uh, services, uh, customer complaints that you know you are you don't have the latest data available in the data warehouse. So Oracle database in memory, which will help you to run uh, analytical queries much better way in OLTP system. This is basically for supporting mixed workload on uh, OLTP system. 
how this happens this uh, oltp i mean oracle database in memory which uses dual format so which uses oltp mainly uses the raw format you know how the data is being stored and access uh, in case if it is uh, oltp it's in a raw format you use only a certain set of uh, raws for uh, processing your oltp transaction whether it can be an update it can be a, uh, a delete uh, so it uses only a set of uh, you know records or data set from the database but when you say analytical application it normally performs uh, aggregation on particular columns so it will touch up all the data from end to end so maybe for example you want to generate the revenue for a particular region and a particular year you know that this is going to scan um, most of the data which is stored in your uh, database so these are the oltp or, or you know analytical related queries oracle uh, database in memory will help you to uh, uh, you know boost this one by enabling the columnar uh, format uh, the way it is stored in the memory for such kind of analytical queries. So this is again very easy to implement. And uh, this again works with uh, our cutting uh, edge technologies and the features like Rack, Security, uh, Data Guard, uh, Active Data Guard. So it is, it is easily integratable. We don't need to do anything uh, for uh, integration purpose, but for enabling it, you your application does not need to have any changes. It's, it's like, you know, flipping a switch, like you just turn it on at the memory uh, at the database server, I mean, database layer, and it start working. So <clears throat> this is how uh, uh, Oracle database in memory help to achieve the, you know, performance, higher performance for your, uh, analytical workloads on an OLTP database. So again, uh, I already explained you how does it work. Uh, for OLTP, uh, mainly the raw format is the be best. So what if, uh, you know, you might be having a question, okay, how does it work when we have OLTP queries, uh, when the D or Oracle database in memory is enabled, we have uh, OLTP queries as well as uh, analytical queries running in the memory. How does it work? Oracle database uh, engine will take care of this one uh, by, uh, you know, if it is an OLTP query, it will be using the raw format, which is the optimal format for your OLTP queries uh, and the statements. And if it is an uh, analytical related one, this will be using the columnar format for the aggregation, for uh, summing up, all those processing, it will be using the columnar format, which is stored in the memory. It is again a part of uh, your uh, SGA, which is allocated for uh, uh, database, which is common. Only thing you have to reserve some space for in memory uh, for using this option. Again, this is, uh, you can use up to 16 GB of memory uh, for a database in memory without any license. That's also very important uh, because you can start using it without having the license in place. Uh, that is, you will uh, have, you will really, uh, you know, able to see the performance benefit. It is not in single digits. The performance gains in terms of analytical query processing is that always in double digits. You have certain advisors that will help you to find out the, uh, you know, candidate tables which are uh, good for uh, starting, uh, starting to use Oracle database in memory for analytical queries. So I would suggest this is one of the best features and we should start using it uh, in terms of the options available. Uh, the next one is uh, advanced compression. Uh, right. So, okay. Uh, like we mentioned, uh, you know, uh, the data volume, which is doubling in size, you know, that uh, the enterprises uh, that manages and store storing the data, which is exponentially growing in these days. And the, it's a big challenge for the IT. Like we know that, you know, storage uh, uh, prices are declining, but the requirement for the storage is again increasing. It never stops. Uh, so because of the volume of the data, the application generates is huge. So what if uh, we have a solution uh, that will compress the data and it will store, uh, you know, save your storage cost as well as your, uh, it will double up your performance. Oracle Advanced Compression is, uh, uh, you know, there to help you with, you know, compressing the data as well as improving the performance. 
uh, by you know it compresses structured and unstructured data it also have many other methods it will help you to compress uh, the way it is stored in the database also it will help you to improve the performance so we have a couple of options and methods that we use in oracle database for advanced compression uh, we have uh, advanced raw compression and index compression both works well with oltp there is no change or uh, no application changes required to enable this compression uh, you can say uh, you know at least uh, you know 50x uh, is the ratio of the storage reduction that we have seen on uh, our uh, customers uh, uh, like uh, the storage gains you know uh, saving in when we enable the compression on uh, tables and indexes then we have um, uh, backup compression and lob compression okay we have arm and backup compression uh, by compressing the arm and backup uh, it is uh, it is saving the backup storage uh, like if it is stored in the tape you are saving the storage space also uh, you don't have to decompress uh, when we are restoring the uh, backup so the importance is that you know you're reducing the total backup time as well as the recovery time you know how important is the backup and recovery time in terms of in times there is a disaster and all we have certain set of uh, rto and rpo to meet so these uh, options will help you to achieve that target very easily also the storage cost when we talk about lob compression it is something like you know you know uh, lob object which are stored in the database uh, like uh, spreadsheets images uh, pdf documents uh, then uh, we have payloads which are stored in lob segments so these all are uh, some objects are already compressed format uh, so we can use in that case we can use lob deduplication method for example you have an email uh, many people you know you are you are trying to store uh, many records with an email attachment so email attachment is the same one for all the rows why we have to store this uh, duplicated data in uh, database instead of that if you enable the deduplication for lob segments how it will store it will only store once and rest of the records it will be a pointer uh, to that particular attachment which is in the uh, you know stored in the database so likewise you can enable the deduplication for the lobby object uh, also you can have compression uh, 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 enable for the lobby uh, objects like uh, uh, XML, xml workloads and all so this will save you the cost of uh, you know it will say not just to say uh, the cost of the database i mean the storage it will also help you to reduce the database footprint uh, because a lobby is normally it is very huge in size so by creating by compressing it you are trying to reduce the uh, entire database size uh, the next one is like advanced network compression uh, this one uh, is for the network uh, data which is transferred uh, across the network so you can enable it it's very simple you just have to enable uh, you know a uh, few parameters in your sqlnet and tns uh, uh, files this will start using it and you can have uh, you know uh, good throughput for your network data transfer uh, when you have the advanced network compression enabled likewise we have uh, data guard redo transport compression we all know what is data guard right so data guard is something like you know you are replicating your primary data uh, primary uh, database to a standby database for resiliency purpose so uh, this data guard standby database is always in sync by uh, redo transported from the primary database to the standby database so the redo it depends on the volume of data which is generated in the primary what if we can uh, reduce the size of this entire redo which has been transported from the primary to standby definitely it's going to help you to reduce the latency time so by enabling the uh, data guard redo transport you are reducing the total uh, latency time you have less data <clears throat> less data to be trans uh, you know transported to the standby side this will help you to have you know um, to make your database in, in sync there won't be you know you can reduce the total time gap of synchronization between this primary and standby database this is uh, you know very good option for enabling the data guard redo compression and we have database <clears throat> data pump uh, backup compression this is like an export utility or how you export the data uh, from your database that also can be compressed so these are the main um, uh, compression uh, methods that we have it in oracle database and uh, in general uh, 
you know, what are the main benefits in terms of storage? Yes, uh, we have seen 50 percentage of storage reduction uh, when we enable the compression. Also, it improves the query performance. <clears throat> So it is not uh, degrading the performance of the queries. Uh, rather, we have seen uh, very good 2.5 uh, is the ratio that we have, uh, I mean, uh, improvements in the query performance in typical. And uh, finally, which is more important is the backup and recovery time, uh, which has reduced drastically and which is around 33 percentage of benefits we have seen when we enable the compression on the uh, backup and recovery uh, compression enable the arman backup and recovery arman uh, compression so this talks about the benefits of the database compression uh, i believe it's clear why it is important to have uh, you know our objects compressed uh, when we uh, save it in the database uh, as well as when we take a backup uh, uh, of the data when we try to move uh, data out of the uh, you know database also this <clears throat> So the next one is uh, database uh, uh, additional management pack, which I already talked about, which will enhance your capabilities of your uh, uh, Oracle database uh, flavors that you're using. Uh, the first one is database tuning and uh, tuning pack, uh, database diagnostic and diagnostic pack. So this is, uh, I think we all know uh, how to diagnose things like you have a performance problem in your database how we will diagnose the performance issues or we want to see the history of activities or issues that happen in the database so this particular pack is really useful and really required and very easy to use to analyze uh, the performance historical uh, performance of your database as well as <clears throat> how the sessions were doing what was the problems in the database if you want to compare the database reports of a particular time uh, for example i was having my database my application was having a severe performance issue from uh, every day morning one to two i want to diagnose the issues which had happened during that time uh, so i can generate the reports or uh, from one to two it based on the snapshot collected the history of data which has been continuously collected according to the configuration you can uh, diagnose the issues based uh, using this pack so basically this is awr uh, active workload repository reports and active session history and you can generate uh, when you are using real application clusters uh, you can have a global report of all your database instances uh, basically uh, uh, diagnostic reports which is available with the diagnostic pack uh, we have uh, uh, like diagnostic pack we have a tuning pack available uh, which is uh, really useful when you have an application SQL performance issue. You can define, it, it gives you the hints to improve the performance of a uh, SQL if it is underperforming, uh, like SQL tuning advisor, SQL access advisor. Okay, you have a SQL which is access pattern is uh, not, uh, uh, you know, the optimal one. It gives you the, you know, uh, he, uh, you know recommendations to change the access patterns, uh, create profile so that you know whenever there is a chance of degradation uh, you can choose one profile that will be picked up by the optimizer database optimizer to execute it without going for a query regression so these all are possible with oracle uh, management pack which is the tuning pack which is a really useful and really easy tool uh, this will help us to uh, perform uh, you know make things makes our life easy in terms of sql tuning uh, and uh, real time sql monitoring it has all the, all the details like how much is the cpu utilized by uh, your uh, sqls which one is the you know it gives you the highest number of events everything will be uh, you know given to you this this is easily usable with enterprise manager cloud control these are the diagnostic and management tool. So these are the options that we have already covered. These are the important options. And I'll be covering uh, some of the other options in the coming slides also, uh, along with MA and uh, MSA. So I hope uh, things are clear. So I'll move on to my next uh, session, next topic, which is maximum availability architecture. All right. Uh, Okay, this slide, uh, the main takeaway from this slide is that it's, it's all that expensive. Uh, just think about the downtimes, uh, how much this costs, uh, and it's very, uh, uh, it, it, 
it has a cost associated with it that is huge cost when you have a downtime so downtimes uh, and the business continuity is really important these days you have heard of instagrams and facebook uh, which is gone for uh, you know 24 hours downtime in the recent past uh, yeah. so it took a lot of time for them to come up and uh, the customers were uh, really uh, you know uh, uh, you know unhappy with this uh, and there are a lot of reputation issues when we have a downtime so when we talk about downtimes you have planned and unplanned downtimes so planned downtimes when we say it uh, it can be your database changes application changes you wanted to patch you know you are planning for it there are some patches needs to be applied what if there is an unplanned downtime your server is crashed your uh, server is not having enough memory to perform uh, there can be corruptions of, or uh, you have a site failure these all are unexpected downtimes right so you have to have a business continuity plan uh, in order for your application to continue irrespective of uh, you know what is there uh, so you must have a business continuity plan and it should be tested and uh, verified before you end up in such a situation so these are the key terminologies which is uh, you know very important when we talk about uh, maximum availability architecture you have high availability what is high availability highly making a uh, server highly available means you want to make a redundant copy of a server uh, or anything that will continue in terms uh, the other one is not available uh, if it hard it can be hardware software fellas anything so it is a high availability it's called high availability you mainly talks about the local uh, you know failures or any bugs or anything which is encountered in uh, encountered locally this is called uh how you are going to mitigate such situations called highly making it highly available and you have scalable your application should be scalable how you can make it scalable you have a performance requirement additional uh, requirements for additional nodes to meet the uh, application requirements it should be you know online you have to do it easily scalable scale out uh, easily so these all are scalable requirements of your uh, uh, database when you have rolling updates and patches what is rolling updates and patches you you must be able to do uh, software enhancement bugs or bug fixes security bug fixes everything online it should not take uh, you know the full application or full database downtime when we have such things so uh, you it must be online then we have disaster recovery any application enterprise application as i mentioned it has to be tested for continued business continuity uh, just to meet their sls in terms of rto and rpo so what is this rto and rpo uh, so rto is nothing but the recovery time i have a site failure my entire site is down i don't have the con business continuity how long time i will be uh, within how much time i will be able to continue my services from the other available site uh, the resiliency site. So this is called RTO, the time which is required for me to continue with uh, after the failover, uh, how, how long time it's going to take. Like RPO, how much data my application can, you know, uh, tolerate, the data loss, uh, how much my application can tolerate. These all are important terminologies uh, and which will contribute to or contribute application, contribute to your application to have a maximum high, highly available uh, high availability of your applications so oracle <clears throat> uh, this architecture uh, you know oracle has developed uh, they are, we are building uh, this architecture by you know our uh, decades of experience and the customer requirements to um, make their uh, applications highly available so we have tested uh, it uh, with all the requirements uh, of the re customer highly available requirements plus uh, the technologies and features that Oracle has. It is continuously evolving. It is continuously tested. And uh, it has various layers to meet your customer uh, uh, requirements when your application requires around the clock availability. So in MA, it's actually a blueprint for your uh, highly available, uh, I mean, highly availability, high availability requirements. You have different, different layers like bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Each has its own profile. Uh, for example, your development doesn't require, uh, you know, uh, round the clock. It can be down sometimes. Uh, you know, you don't have to invest a lot of money into that development environment. So based on 
based on your requirements you profile your uh, requirements into bronze which comes under bronze maybe your application requires high availability you keep it in a different layer in this uh, framework you have bronze silver gold and platinum uh, frameworks each framework has you know uh, benefits from the previous or the bottom uh, uh framework for example silver will be having benefits all the features of bronze plus additional features like that so each layer is using uh, our uh, key technologies uh, for uh, uh, continuous availability data protection active replication and scaling out so data protection it uses data you know flashback and uh, backup technologies and active replication oracle key technologies like uh, oracle active data guard and uh, golden gate for uh, active replication from primary side to the standby side you have active replication that means your data is uh, active active uh, you can uh, read the data from both the sides uh, similarly you have uh, for high availability you have rack uh, asm and scaling out you have asm and sharding these are the key technologies we use to fit into these requirements according to your you know, high availability requirements and the deployment choice you can use the same framework you can uh, you know you decide which option is most suitable for your application to meet your high availability requirement and you folks can fall into generic it, it deployment models are generic system it is uh, uh, Well, compatible with this framework is applicable for engineered system uh, cloud and even an autonomous database also so this is one of the uh, you know uh, main architecture framework that oracle has developed over its uh, you know uh, 40 46 years of uh, uh, past 40 46 years and this is really critical for your uh, your application to run round the clock so it is again depends upon your uh, application requirements to make the best suitable framework out of these four frameworks according to your requirements <clears throat> so uh, from this architecture uh, like i mentioned i uh, i i will cover uh, the real application cluster which is very important in terms of how your databases can be high highly available so real application cluster uh, is to protect uh, isolated issues such as uh, fail fail server uh, like or a bug fail bug uh, encountered in your one of the servers so how real application server works <clears throat> it's it's oracle's uh, high availability uh, feature which will give you uh, okay your database uh, is running from multiple instances that means multiple servers using this multiple servers you can access your database so how does it work the architecture is something like this so you have uh, six nodes here and uh, no so you have four, four nodes here and all these four nodes accessing the same storage array so this is something like uh, uh, for uh, when one of the nodes goes down it's not a single point of failure so if this go node goes down you have access to the database through other three nodes so just think about you wanted to do some hardware maintenance on one of your nodes or you have to patch something security patch so you can do it in a rolling fashion fashion by bringing down one of the nodes applying the patch then you bring it up so this reconfiguration of removing <clears throat> shutting when you shut down the one of the nodes this reconfiguration is easily uh, you know it is syncing across all the nodes so it is automatic you don't have to do anything uh, so that is rack i think i am running out of time so i'll be uh, pooja is it okay i will continue for five more minutes uh, i'll try to okay uh, no issues you can continue for another five more minutes okay uh, so fine so that is how rack works then we have transparent application continuity this is again uh, we have uh, um okay when we have a downtime in the database this actually masks the uh, database downtime from the application your database is down and uh, when the database is highly available you have the rack configuration at the same time when it goes down your application should not face any downtimes or or any glitches in your application this is a simple feature you can enable it if you enable it your application will not have any impact uh, like there was a downtime the database one of the nodes was down so this is something like you mask it 
this is very easy to implement. There are certain set of configurations that has to be done and absolutely uh, no, no change in terms of application. This is again for the application continuity. Uh, we have data guard next. Uh, uh, data guard, active data guard is something like uh, 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 like I mentioned, it's a replication technology for your database, uh, and it's same like uh, the same uh, technologies uses for database replication, uh, like data guard, with some additions. Like you can read the data, and sometimes you can do occasional updates also in the standby database. So it's a replication technology, and uh, yes, uh, it's basically for uh, offloading your primary database. Uh, you can move your reports since your database can be open for read only. You can have your reports, uh, batch, pro, you know, reports running from your standby database. And for example, you have some down, you know, backups running from the primary database. It may create problems in your application when the backup triggers in the night or if it is triggered in the morning. So you can offload such sort of operations to the standby uh, side, which is Active Data Guard option. So this is very important if we have Data Guard option for offloading the workload from primary to the standby database. Also, one of the important uh, feature is that, you know, um, it automatically corrupts the, uh, you know, repairs the block. That means storage replication in, uh, when we use storage replication, uh, we are, the storage replication, it copies the, you know, if the physical block is corrupted, that corrupted block then is copied across the standby side. There is no point that, uh, storage uh, software knows that in the block is corrupted. But since it is active data card, how it handles? It is Oracle's methods, it, uh, Oracle's process. It takes care of this, uh, you know, block corruption. Either it will try to fix it uh, from the standby side or uh, uh, it will fix it uh, by from the primary. So these types of automatic block corruption is uh, possible with active data card configuration. And this is done without uh, any intervention. So these sort of important options are really useful to have the continuous uh, availability of your environments. So I'll I'll try to skip this part because I have to cover the site uh, maximum security architecture. Uh, so the maximum security architecture. All right. Uh, yes. This slide talks about uh, the stolen market, actually. When you say the stolen market, which is uh, vehicle market or smartphone market, cocaine market, uh, we think that it is really high. But uh, the information security, uh, which is uh, the credit card stolen market, is really high, which is almost $114 billion, uh, which is really high when you compare to the other market. And it is, again, increasing. So we know that you know your data should be uh, secured in the database. That means a zero trust protection uh, architecture that has to be developed for your Oracle database, whatever is stored in your database. So uh, how in Oracle we are trying to build, we are building the Oracle maximum security architecture by assessing your database security status and preventing it. And you detect it and report it according to your policies. So this is how you build the zero trust uh, framework for your database security. So we know the data which is resting in a database has to be secured. We use transparent data encryption for securing your data, which is at rest. And it is simple. Uh, there is no change record from the application side. It is a database configuration. You create it, uh, you enable the encryption for your column or your table space, and you will get a key. That key can be stored in Oracle Key Vault. So these are different database advanced security options. Uh, that security option you can use for securing the data at uh, rest you have uh, okay you protected the data from your uh, you know um, back end access how about uh, privileged user access so application administrators database administrators who has got direct access to the database database vault in place to help you to uh, segregate that uh, application data access uh, from the database. You can protect the data, sensitive data, uh, from you, even from your DBAs, even from your sysadmins, uh, even from your sysdba privileges, even from your application users without, uh, with Oracle Database Vault. Also, uh, sensitive data, which is stored in the database, 
uh, which has to be uh, you know uh, out when your data is accessed out of your application it has to be uh, hidden actually so you use data redaction if the application data the sensitive data is accessed out of the application you have data redaction in place and you can have data masking and subsetting if you want to clone the data and give this data to the development for development purposes you have data subsetting and masking uh, uh, option available for you to mask it and give the development team for testing and uh, all those purposes and then we have uh, uh, audit fault uh, which will give which will uh, help you to enable the data protection uh, on the confidential data and you can report and configure policies and alert also uh, and this audit fault will give you an interface wherein you can uh, analyze your uh, uh, auditing uh, records. Also, we have database firewall that will prevent uh, the security anomalies from outside, including SQL injection. Again, this data and auditor records can be propagated to the audit fault for further analysis. So these all requirements you don't need to have all these uh, you know uh, options enabled for you to have uh, according to your database but certain it, it again depends on your requirements how much critical your data is how you want to protect it it all depends so in uh, general all these uh, tools together makes your database zero trust but fully secure uh, architecture so you have the data driven uh, you have the data driven uh, uh, auditing also you can enable the auditing or you can enable and control the data based on the data content so it's like enterprise data security so these all are really required for you to have a complete secure architecture uh, so the next slide uh, talks about uh, the Oracle database and uh, which is uh, ranked always as one according to these surveys. So you mean that, you know, we, uh, Oracle has developed all these technologies, all these features for securing your uh, data uh, to the maximum level. So we already talked about the Oracle database vault, which is protecting your data from uh, privileged users. You have the database, uh, uh, you know, TD, transparent data encryption, which is for protecting the data from your OS and storage uh, uh, admins, you, whoever is having the access to the database server. But what if uh, SQL, I mean, you are a database administrator uh, or application administrator who has the password and the database access, how you will protect the, you know, critical and sensitive data. Database Vault will help you to do this one. And also, if your database administrator is trying to access the data out of the office hours, or if he's trying to access the data from a different uh, uh, IP address, everything can be configured using the Oracle Database Vault. You want to prevent uh, somebody to modifying the data, like DBA, you restrict the truncate from a DBA, because DBA is a privileged user. You want to restrict uh, the DBA to truncate certain set of tables, which are really important, or restrict those important tables from uh, querying. So all these uh, configurations can be done with Oracle Database Vault. This will give you control on privileged user and separating the uh, duties of your data, whoever is having the access to your database. So this is um, Oracle Database Vault. and. Uh, uh, we have a uh, database uh, security assessment tool. Okay, you have uh, all these tools available for securing your database. But before that, you have to have a check on the status of your database. Uh, what is the condition? What are the parameters that are enabled, which will help you to secure it from the base level? So you have a security assessment tool, which is for free. You can start using it. Uh, check the situation, check the status of your database. Uh, what are the options enabled? What are the file permissions? This is very simple to use. You just have to download it from Oracle and then start using it. What are, who all users are having database access, their roles, everything can, you know, you get a sample report like this. Uh, basic information, privileged uses and uh, roles, their controls, if data encryption is enabled, all these details uh, with uh, high, medium and low risk. So based on this report, you can uh, start fixing your database configuration, then start using the Oracle security options and features for making a highly secure database environment. Uh, I think uh, that's it. Uh, from my side, I know this was really high level and I was a bit uh, fast because I was running out of time. Uh, I believe this 
has given you some idea of uh, important options and features of Oracle database that we have. And of course, you can contact us for uh, anything more required on these topics. We'll be happy to assist you all. Pooja, over to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Sina. Thank you for uh, such a wonderful presentation. Also, uh, Islam and also um, Prem Kumar for such wonderful uh, presentation today. I'll give another five minutes for any uh, questions you would like to ask. Uh, we already have one question from Mr. Venkat Krishnan. Uh, anyone else would like to ask any questions? Please feel free. OK, I have a question here for Islam. Um, is there any additional cost associated with uh, using converged database future, uh, features? <clears throat> yes, OK, yeah, uh, for uh, for the converged database, as we said, we have many options and all of these options now became in Oracle for free. So the special is for free uh, blockchain now also for free. Uh, in memory, as uh, mentioned by uh, Sina, it's became uh, for free up to 16 gig till uh, starting from uh, version 18, 18.8. Uh, uh, 18 and uh, for uh, the special and the graph and JSON, all of this feature now became for free inside the Oracle database without any extra cost. Uh, also, Islam, how can I uh, define which table will be enhanced if I uh, host it in memory? Ah, for the uh, which tables will be applicable for the in memory to gain from the feature? Yes. Um, the idea here is that uh, as as we explain, we in in memory we should highlight some object or define some object to host it in the memory to make use or to make use from this feature. We are not able to put all the data in the memory, so Oracle introduced a a, a, a feature or a product called in memory advisor. You can download it and install it in your environment to know and run it against your workload. It's running against the cursor cache in the memory during the peak hour to define and it will generate for you a full report. Based on this report, you will be able to define what is the hot object, what is the most accessed object, and what is the gain you will find it from hosting this object in memory. So, for example, table X, this table we are using it for huge reporting and analytics statements or queries. Based on the report, you will find that this queries will be improved by around might be uh, 3x or 4x. And based on this, you can decide to move this table in memory. So to, 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 to gain from the feature, to gain from this feature and make use from feature. So based on the in-memory advisor report, you can decide which object I need to host it in memory. And once you uh, uh, agreed on this list of table, you just need to uh, alter the table, put it in memory, and define the area in the uh, memory area in the SGA, and you will start make use from the feature, and you will gain this uh, performance that you need. Okay. Um. Any more questions, team? Yeah. Uh. uh uh, Islam, I just have a question that the converged database, how is the user access uh, controlled in the converged database? Because in the normal uh, uh, traditional database and you have all the uh, other options also, how the user access is uh, uh, handled? Uh, user access, uh, uh, you, you, what you mean exactly by user access? You mean how to control the user access or how yeah, can the user access, access this feature? Correct. Correct. Across the, because you have some integrations and other stuff, so how mm -hmm. the super user and other user access is handled? See, uh, related to the point, related to the converged database, converged database at the end, all this feature, it will be introduced within uh, Oracle engine itself. So this one of the feature, as we explained, whatever the security level you will implement it, you will be able to gain it from all the workload, all the data types. It will be implemented on all the tables, all the objects you need to implement the security or the users itself. How to control the user, like controlling the user from the security perspective. As we explained in the presentation today, uh, my colleague Sina covers the part related to the database vault. Database vault is working for each workload, whatever it's inside Oracle. So I can control the high privileged user, any user with the DBA privilege, any user with the high privileged user, I can apply a policy on top of it to control or to define what we call trusted bus who is allowed to access this object who is allowed to select from this object who is not allowed to access this object so this is something also can be implementing using our security tools okay 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 um any more questions team okay 
uh, I think with this uh, we can uh, wrap the session today. Um, thank you so much for attending the session and uh, most importantly uh, for your uh, time. Um, I know we did go a little overboard on the time, so thank you so much for being so patient. Um, in future also, if you have um, any requirements you want to get back to the team, please reach out to uh, 4 i Apps, um, Oracle team, even in Gram Micro, we are here to support. And um, again, special thanks to uh, 4 i Apps and uh, Oracle team for making this session happen. Um, have a great day ahead. Please watch out for uh, the thank you mailer, which we'll be sending. We will share the recording of the session along with the thank you mailer and also a feedback form. I request you to please uh, fill the feedback form and share. Uh, your feedbacks are always uh, very valuable, and we look forward to conducting many more sessions uh, in future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, team. Yeah, thank you, everybody.